Among the many comic strip characters that populate the newspapers, one has proven herself as a clever trollmaker and a good amount for antics still amuse, even if she likely remains obscure to the current generation of children. I'm talking about Little Lulu, who debuted in 1935 and managed to last several years on the pages and leaped onto other forms of media as well. Little Lulu was created by Marjorie Henderson Buell, known by her pen name Marge, after the Sad Evening Post commissioned her to create a comic strip. She had already created two earlier comic series, The Boyfriend and Dashing Dot, but Little Lulu would prove to be her legacy. The first panel strip immediately established Lulu's mischievous personality. Marge sought to create a comic strip heroine who could get away with being just as, if not more, misbehaving than the boys featured in comics at the time. One important element was also Lulu's curls, which became an iconic part of the character's design and was based on Marge's own hair when she was a child. Lulu would often get into trouble with her parents, annoy the adults around her, or would go head-to-head -head with a local boy later given the name Tubby. The strips would vary in showing how Lulu would defy society's norms, sometimes in school, sometimes at home, and other times around town. Through those panels, Marge was able to give Lulu a fully formed personality that made her hit with young readers and even occasionally their parents. The strips also made Marge a very successful cartoonist, and she was even able to retain the rights to the character, often licensing her out for merchandise. Little Lulu most notably became a spokesperson for Kleenex tissues, later being animated in television commercials for the product. Starting in 1943, Paramount Pictures produced a series of Little Lulu cartoons created by their famous studio's animation division. These 26 cartoons are certainly an odd bunch, but they have their entertaining moments. Little Lulu was made into a more of a Bugs Bunny type, often messing with characters and performing all sorts of outlandish stunts using the cartoon logic common at the time. She even got a recurring enemy in the form of a man who held different jobs and was frequently at odds with Lulu. These cartoons did have their fair share of amusing visual gags and funny physical comedy jokes. Some of the notable talents who worked on these cartoons included Popeye animator and storyman Seymour Keitel and Bill Teichler, who had previously been the principal animator for Dumbo and Chernabog at Disney. However, these cartoons were made in the 1940s, and unfortunately, that means that is material that really has not aged well. In the shorts, Lulu is given a black maid, who is exactly the stereotype you would expect her to be. Lulu also puts on blackface in more than one cartoon. These are products of their time, but just a warning if you ever decide to give these cartoons a watch, because they do get uncomfortable times and is probably the reason why they have not exactly gotten much television airplay over the past 40 years. When Paramount decided not to renew the license for Little Lulu, Famous Studios instead created a similar precautious girl in the form of Little Audrey, a character that actually still exists to this day. In 1947, Marge retired from drawing comic strips, and cartoonist John Stanley was given the responsibility of continuing the character in comic book form. He would prove instrumental in the longevity of Little Lulu and her neighborhood, expanding on the other characters and creating new ones. Stanley also slightly redesigned the cast, alongside Irving Tripp. There was further emphasis on the rivalry between the boys and girls that populated the town, although there were times when they teamed up too. Lulu continued to be smart and cheeky in the way she dealt with the boys and other adversaries. She often interacted with her best friend Annie, the looks-obsessed Gloria, the much younger Alvin, who Lulu was often required to babysit, the snobbish Wilbur, and the practical jokester Iggy. Lulu's relationship with Tubby was a particular focus, as sometimes they would be at odds with one another, and sometimes they would pull schemes together. Tubby and his club's rivalry with the West Side Boys would especially inspire them to seek help from Lulu. These comic books proved very popular throughout the 1950s and continued right until 1984. In the early 60s, Lulu Lulu returned to movie theater screens when Paramount produced two new shorts in a limited animation style, directed by Seymour Keitel. Alvin's Solo Flight and Frog's Legs both adapted John Stanley's stories and ended up being amusing little cartoons 
nicely replicating the look and humor of the comics. Stanley's comics also helped make Lil Lulu a big hit around the world, including in Japan, when Nippon Animation produced a 26-episode television series in 1976. Titled Lil Lulu and Her Little Friends, the show utilized these Stanley iterations, albeit redrawn in a Japanese anime style. The show does retain the humor and characteristics of the characters, showing the rivalry and occasional partnerships between the boys and girls. Little Lulu still proves to be her likable, mischievous self as we see her antics get on the nerves of the adults around her. In the late 70s, Lil Lulu was adapted to live action for the first time in two specials produced for the ABC Weekend Special Anthology Show. At the moment, only the first special is easily available, and it's an interesting watch. For starters, it does look like it was made on a budget of about $10, and those looking to see the characters faithfully recreated in live action will be disappointed. This special really could have been about any group of child characters being sent to a summer camp. The characters actually have to say the names out loud in order for us to know who is supposed to be who. Lulu is even given pigtails rather than curls in the special, which is fair. Maybe the actress just felt more comfortable in pigtails. They did include a few references to the comics beyond the names, but this little Lulu exists as more of a curiosity for fans than anything substantial. In 1995, Cenar produced a new animated series titled The Little Lulu Show. The show started airing on HBO in the United States and CTV in Canada, with Trace Ullman providing her voice for the first season and Jane Woods taking over for the rest of the series. It took direct influence from the John Stanley comics and even faithfully reused the character designs. What's impressive about the Little Lulu show is how it never felt the need to be modern and hip, giving the series a timeless feel. Even the 40s, 50s setting is kept intact, and the show utilized the theme song from the Paramount cartoons. The most notable change from the source material was turning Lulu into a stand-up comedian for a series of segments where she addressed an audience from a stage. And those bits were genuinely funny. There was a charming quality to the Little Lulu show, and it basically served as an introduction to the character for many of my generation. After the television show ended its run in 1999, Little Lulu has been largely ignored. Outside of a Brazilian comic book with teenage versions of the characters, there has been no new material featuring Lulu and her friends, which is unusual for such a significant comics icon. Why is that? Well, part of the reason is due to the rights changing hands a number of times. Since the 70s, when Marge officially sold them the rights, Lil Lulu was owned by Western Publishing, the same company responsible for the Little Golden Books. However, Western eventually declared bankruptcy in 2001. Classic Media, which had recently acquired the Harvey Comics and UPA libraries, bought the remainder of the company, including the Lil Lulu rights. Then, in 2012, Classic Media was sold to DreamWorks Animation. A few years later, DreamWorks Animation was bought by Universal. Somehow, none of these companies have found ways to revive Lil Lulu, and I think it's about time she made a return. I don't even know if children these days are even aware of her existence, but DreamWorks did recently find a new audience for the more obscure Harvey Comics characters with the Netflix series Harvey Girls Forever. I would love to see Little Lulu and the rest of the gang given a similar treatment. Whatever happens to her in the future, I think Marge's cheeky comic strip girl with the loopy curls deserves to be considered an important creation in the history of comics. See you next time.